Sorry, guys. Disappointing effort in the NFL on Sunday's show. But the Power 5 is still on an outstanding 59-31-4 run overall. I've got four plays for you today in Major League Baseball, plus a look at the Monday Night Football game between the Jets and 49ers coming up in just a moment. As a reminder, you can always comment down below with any questions, comments, or thoughts on my plays for today's card. Let's start with an ugly one. Marlins plus one and a half on the run line at the Pirates, 640 Eastern. Yes, I am fading Paul Skeens here. Just don't think this Pittsburgh team, even with Skeens on the bump, should ever be a money line favorite of this size. But because they are, we can grab Miami plus one and a half at a plus price. I like that. I also like that the Marlins starter of Valente Belozo is coming off an outing where he threw six shutout innings, a three-hit ball. Remember, Belozo and the Marlins were a client play in that game. They got the job done for me as uh, $1.25 home underdogs against the Nationals. Look, I get Skeens is awesome, but the Pirates lineup is not awesome. They're 28th in WRC Plus against righties. Belozo is a righty. The Pirates' bullpen is shaky, 27th in ERA. Don't want to take them out of the equation. And Skeens threw 100 pitches his last time out, guys. He did end up getting the win. But had to get out of two bases loaded jams, had four walks. I've mentioned on the show before, walks are starting to become an issue for Skeens. So Marlins, plus one and a half on the run line. I think they keep this one close. Number two, Reds' first five run line. So plus half a run, speaking of keeping it close. Uh, they are facing the Braves. Should be around minus 125 to take the half a run. This is also a 640 Eastern start. Look, over the last 27 games, the Braves' starting rotation has been dominant. They have not allowed more than three earned runs once in that 27-game stretch. Pretty impressive. Doesn't sound good for our bet, does it? But I wouldn't be surprised if old Chaz Morton, who's got to be approaching about 80 years old at this point, snaps the string of quality outings for the Braves. Morton still has a 4.59 expected ERA for the season, so he's been overachieving a bit as of late. Meanwhile, the starter for the Reds is Nick Martinez who used to be a reliever. We talked about this before on the program. And he's done a really nice job with the transition to the role of starter, has Martinez. He has a 2.74 ERA and a .85 whip on the road this season. I think the Reds, who are better than their record, I'll continue to shout that out, are live to win this game. If they do, it's likely going to be because of Martinez and keeping it close, at least keeping it close early. I wouldn't be surprised if the Reds are leading after five innings of this game, but the smartest bet here is to take that half run in the first five, not too expensive to do so, just minus 125. Smash that like button if you agree. All right, number three, let's now hit the interleague slate for a game. Mets at Blue Jays. This is a 7.07 Eastern start north of the border. Mets just had their nine-game win streak snapped on Sunday. Bullpen gave up two runs in the top of the ninth against the aforementioned Reds. So a bit of an anti-swagger spot, so to speak, uh, if you will, for the Metropolitans, who are going to be starting Paul Blackburn on Monday. Blackburn has not been all that great since coming over from Oakland. He's got a 5.18 ERA his last five starts overall. He just gave up five runs on 10 hits in only two and a third innings last time out. Now, the catch here is Toronto has yet to name a starting pitcher. But regardless of who goes, we should be able to grab the home team. At an underdog price, this, to me, is just more about wanting to fade the Mets based on the situation anyway. So I'm playing Toronto. I'll update it. Uh, check out back down in the comments section when Toronto does name their starter. I'll give you uh, kind of some further info on this one. But I like the situation tonight for Toronto as a home underdog. Number four, Guardians White Sox under eight and a half. This is a 740 Eastern start. And yet another situation where it's not... 100% clear who's starting for one of the teams. Still says undecided next to the White Sox on the Wage Talk Live odds screen. I don't think that matters, though, really. Uh, my client's got a 4% best bet on Sunday with the under and Guardians Dodgers. The guards ended up losing 4 0. And as I detailed in my write up, the offensive woes continue for Cleveland. Their bottom six and runs scored since the All Star break, and their scoring average dips down to 4.09 runs per game away from home for the season. That is bottom third in the league. Yesterday marked the fourth time in the last 20 games Cleveland was blanked. They scored just five runs the entire series against the Dodgers. Curiously, the Guardians have had issues with the White Sox all season, only managing to split the first 10 head-to-head -head meetings. They're not surprisingly uh, the White Sox now. Let's go to them. They're last in every offensive category, basically. So I don't expect a lot of runs from the White Sox either here. 
Uh, I don't care who's starting for him. The rookie, Joey Cantillo, is uh, on the mound for Cleveland. He's not their best starter, but we know the Guardians have the best bullpen in baseball. Runs are going to be at a premium in this AL Central matchup. Guardians, White Sox, under 8.5, it is. All right, before we get to the Monday Night Football game, I just want to let you know my best bet for Major League Baseball is currently loaded uh, at my page at wagertalk.com. It is another total. Just head on over to wt.buzz slash bp. There, you're going to find I'm on a red hot 23 and 11 and 1 all sports run with premium selections at 68% over the last 16 days. That includes a 6 and 1 run with MLB totals after yesterday's 4% under on the Guardians and Dodgers. It was also a winning weekend in football, including 3 and 1 in college. I had Northern Illinois plus 28 over Notre Dame, gave that out on the Power Five earlier in the week as well. Uh, not to mention another pair of outright. Winners with ULM against UAB. Trent Dilfer sticks. And San Jose State beating Air Force. It was a winning week one in the NFL as well. So get that best bet for Monday. Right now available at my page, wt.buzz slash bp. It is a total in Major League Baseball. Now, fifth play. It's time for Major League, or pardon me, Monday Night Football. I, I got ahead of myself there. I like the 49ers under 24 and a half. You can get that number at DraftKings by laying minus 130. Look, all the money seems to be coming in on both the Jets and the under in this week one matchup. I don't really want to play the Jets at the current number of plus three and a half. We've missed the best of the number already. But it stands to reason if the Jets do cover, it's going to be because of a defense that was among the best in the league last season, allowing just 20.9 points per game. This 49ers offense has questions. Namely, how effective can left tackle Trent Williams and wide receiver Brandon Ayuk be after dealing with their contract squabbles? All offseason, they're not going to be 100%. I think the 49ers offensive line, regardless, has question marks. Uh, I would also rather wait and see how Aaron Rodgers looks in a full game before betting on him and this Jets offense. But I will trust the Jets defense to do their part in what figures to be a low-scoring game all around to close out week one of the National Football League. So again, 49ers under 24.5 is how I'd play this. All right, quick recap of the Power 5 here. Number one, Marlins plus one and a half at the Pirates. Number two, Reds first five plus half a run uh, in against the Braves. Number three, Blue Jays over the Mets, provided their home underdogs. We'll check back when they name a starter. Number four, Guardians White Sox under eight and a half. And number five, 49ers under team total of 24 and a half. You can let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below. Also, Remember to subscribe to the Wage Talk YouTube channel if you already haven't done that. Of course, not only do I drop the Power 5 daily, seven days a week, you can't forget about the morning wager Monday through Friday with myself and the great Mark Zitto. That is going to do it for the Monday edition of the Power 5. Smash that like button if you already haven't done so. Let's keep rolling, guys. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.